Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benjamin Breaker Novotny. And I am Salil Masterdal Gupta. And we are here to cast a game between, excuse me, a game between the University of Washington and what was the other university? Georgia Institute of Technology. All right. And representing the Georgia Institute of Technology, spawning as our red zerg in the upper right hand corner ish position. Um, this name is a little difficult to pronounce. Let me just call him Akamazin. And his Protoss compadre, also spawning in the upper right hand ish position, Echuchi. And for the University of Washington, we have the blue Protoss on the bottom left, Chemist. And joining him is going to be the blue Terran, Rawls. Now, 2v2s can be a very interesting, um, kind of throw in a very interesting aesthetic to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Clan War style games such as these. Yeah. They really do. Because, you, you know, there's just so many different approaches to it. Um, TVP, of course, I think, excuse me, TP versus ZVP, or excuse me, versus ZP is, uh, I don't know. What, what do you think we're going to see out of both sides? Um... It really depends, because I know some people, they go for, like, one person does really economical play, and then the other person is the one building the army, defending, and that usually happens, from my experience, in the Zerg Protoss team, because the Zerg will just take, like, a bunch of bases, get so much resources, that they go Broodlord, Infester, Corruptor, Ultralisk, and then the Protoss is just, like, defending them until they can get there. Interesting. Well, we do see a double gas going down for our blue toss before the cybernetics core is up. So this leads me to think that maybe, just maybe, we're going to see a single base Twilight Council opening. Maybe some DTs. This is usually what it can lead into. Not necessarily what it will. Yeah, and in 2v2s, even though that there's another person that can cover your behind, it makes it actually a lot harder to do the DTs just because of the fact that you have to follow the DTs around four bases instead of two. I never thought of it that way. Actually, yeah. I've, I've got very little 2v2 experience. How about you? Well, before I started playing 1v1, because I felt like I was going to be scrubbing too hard, I played 2v2s. <laughs> all right. And that's all I did, because it was fun. All right. Well, I'm not sure just what we see from Chemist. I think, you know, what is is he trying to give off an air of something by putting, excuse me, two gateways forward at his ramp? Maybe some kind of early pressure? Yeah, possibly. Or what he could be trying to do is just, like, hide something, trick his opponent into thinking that he's going, like, quick Stargate or something. It sounds it like... It sounds like a viable way of thinking, in my opinion. Yeah, like... And we do actually see Rawls going for a quick command center as well. I'm starting to think that this Terran player he might be doing a Zergi 2v2 play. Oh, I mean, once you think about it, mules, mules, mules. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that, that's a lot of tech I think we see getting tacked on for a Protoss on one base. I think you may be right about that. Yeah, so, and of course in 2v2s you do have the resource trading ability, so Rawls, if, if our Protoss decides to actually keep all of these gateways, all of this tech, then Rawls, it, since he's basically only going to be using a few minerals every batch for SCVs and Marines, he can just send his Protoss partner gas all the time. Wow. That, that that sounds pretty OP in my opinion. <laughs> well, that's why 2v2s aren't the most com aren't, aren't the main thing. Wow, and all these gateways are being actually tacked on, and we do have a Twilight Council, so it looks like that earlier call I made may be right, but what do we see in return from Red Toss and Red Zerg? Well, right now, Warpgate just finishing up getting a robotics facility, so our Red Protoss Ichuchi is just get going 3 gate robo, and our Zerg, so far only with a spawning pool in an evolution chamber, and just now getting his lair. I think we may, might be seeing some Spire tech coming out of him, but 
already, uh, Akamazen is just getting his overlord into Chemist's base. And now that he sees all this, he's probably like, Derp, really what scared. do I do? And that yeah. emo lord lived its full life out. Got what it wanted in the end. And that is a lot of zealots to accompany a stalker push out, but now we already see the blink in research. Um, the biggest problem that we see right now is a bunch of links being cranked out from our, uh, from Akamazen, excuse me. And, um, yeah. I mean, just plain straight up links, plain, plain straight up zealots are what counter that at this stage in the game. Yep, and the robotics bay on the way for chemist, so... These Zerglings are going to try going in, and they're going to go in up the open supply depot wall. Going to be killing off a few Marines and the Sentry here. Mm -hmm. That force field was just a little too late. Yeah, and they're trying to put on some pressure here. Ooh, this Expo, they do only manage to get one SCV from what I could tell. They get rushed into the, into the main, excuse me, of uh, our Terran. It looks like they get one or two more, and they just kind of back off for the time being. Actually, they're trying to get out. Well... I'm not sure. Maybe they're just trying to get a good scout on what's going on, see if they can get any more damage. And, ooh, one of these stalkers is just one hit away from dying. Oh, Hawk Amazing thought he could get out, but he really can't because there's so much stuff here. Could have gotten two stalker kills, but to be honest with all of these gateways already up for our Protoss player, I don't think <laughs> two stalkers was going to be such a big deficit. I agree, and um, looks like from Ikuchi, we, or Echuchi, Ikuchi, we have nothing but Immortals and Stalkers being cranked out for the time being, which, I mean, when it comes to Colossi, Colossi Stalker play, like, Immortals can be super effective, but you have to have a really high Immortal count, and you have to have good positioning, and you have to have map control to have good positioning. Yeah, and right now, Templar Archives on the way. Most likely for Archons in a 2v2, it's not really a good idea to get Templar just because of the fact that you have to face two armies. You probably aren't going to be able to storm everything in time. So, right. Archons probably going to be coming out. And then all of these upgrades plus one charge about finish up. There is something that I do want to point out right now. Look at how bare our Terran's infrastructure is. There's, you know, aside from supply depots, yeah. refineries, command centers, orbital commands, there's only a single barracks. And that is so he could actually tech up to orbital commands. The question is, is he going to throw down a third relatively soon? Um, there are some safe positions, relatively safe positions that are out of the way that he could float an orbital command to on this map. And it looks like our Terran player actually going to be taking his partner's natural expansion so I think what we're going to be seeing is the Terran just sending thousands of resources to his partner because on the income tab we see that he's getting about 1500 mineral income yeah that's but the, he only has that's like the most that's the most throughout the game yeah. I mean yeah. out of every player and he's only having like a 200 or less minerals on him at a time yeah, look at that worker count. Now these Lings, after the main army has moved out, is actually trying to make a run by. Unfortunately, these Zealots are coming in and walling off, and they're just not going to get in. They're just tickling Protoss at this stage. Yep, and the Zergling is going to run all the way back home because our blue Protoss chemist is setting up an attack on his op opposing team here. There are Infestors out. Bye. The armies are so small for both players. I know. Just look at all the army value right now. If you put Zerg and if you put the Zerg and the Protoss together, both Ak excuse me, Akamezen and Echuchi together on the same team, we see that Protoss for the blue team actually has a much higher army value than both of them put together. This is a little absurd. Yeah, well this well, I guess this is what happens when your partner just sends you three bases worth of resources while you also have your own resource base. There, there are investors out right now. Are they going to make the game change? They are getting good bungles. Yeah, Money but... bungles, but on zealots. Yeah, the Colossus of Chemist are being able to hit down this destructible debris. The Archon 
doing a lot of damage, and there are still tons of stalkers in here. The Colossus even getting a few hits on the Infestors, and now with the Destructible Debris down, there are three ramps up into the Red Team's base. And I think Chemist, he might be able to win this for the University of Washington. Yeah, just look at this. This is not pretty at all. The Stalkers just blink in. They target down the Colossi. Two more are going to fall without any contest. And now everything is just being clicked and aimed into the main army. There's just nothing left here to fight. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah, these Zerglings are trying to come back, but more Archons, more Zealots getting warped in for Chemist. Stalkers will blink farther forward, going to be taking out the robotics facility, the Colossi are going to be attacking on all of the lairs and hatcheries, and although Akamazin has a third base set up, he really won't be able to use it, and now Manor next side going down from Chemist. There it is, GG from both of them, quite mannered players. Alright guys, so this has been... CSL application video number two. Stay tuned for number three.